Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to learn about how you can convert speech to text with AWS Transcribe and text to speech with AWS Poly using Python. So let's begin. So AWS Transcribe converts audio files into text while AWS Poly converts text into lifelike speech. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover both of them. So let's begin with Transcribe API. All right, so for Transcribe, we need to first upload our audio file to S3 bucket uh, in AWS. So I have uploaded a sample audio here in my S3 bucket. And I'm going to copy this object's S3 URL and save it for my code right here. All right, so I'm going to save my S3 URL here, which will be used to access this object later. All right, so now we can begin the coding part. So first of all, you need to configure your AWS and set up the access keys. So, all right, guys. So now I'll show you how you can create access keys for your AWS account. So head up to your AWS console and then head up to the your profile section, uh, your profile down bar, and you can see the security credentials tab here. Now click on that, and now scroll down to the manage keys sec section, and you can click on create access key here. And now it will ask you to create the keys for a particular user. Uh, you can select the user for which you want to create some keys, but I'll just select the root user, which has all the permissions. Uh, but you can select any particular user which has limited access to the AWS uh, services. So I'll just create a access key for my root user here, and I click on create access key. So here's the access key, uh, access key ID, and secret access key as well. You can copy these and set up in your AWS configure uh, in a terminal. All right. So the second thing includes is downloading the AWS CLI uh, package. You can install it for Windows through the MSI installer. You can search for AWS CLI install, and you can head up to the first link here, and now go down in the Windows section, and you can head up to the AWS CLI uh, official link, which is present right here. And now you can uh, install it uh, any way you want, and you can run this package like this and just follow through all the setup process and install the AWS CLI. All right, it is already installed for me, so uh, it will not walk me through all the steps, but uh, those are just simple steps which requires access to directories or permissions, something like that. For installing uh, AWS CLI in a Linux system, the commands are re relatively simpler. So you just have to hit a call request to AWS CLI server, and then you have to unzip the file you have installed here, and then just uh, run this command so do AWS install that will install AWS CLI in your Linux, Linux system. All right, so after you install AWS CLI, you can head up to your terminal. Uh, you can first restart your device and then head up to the terminal and look for AWS hyphen hyphen version to verify if AWS CLI has been installed or not. And if you get a version number just like this, that represents that your CLI has been installed. Now for configuring the AWS CLI, uh, for multiple services, basically to configure your AWS account inside terminal, you can run the command AWS configure. And now you can enter all the access keys and all the uh, secret access and also the region name, which are present right here. Uh, as you can see, I've already entered it, so it shows me a value right here, but it will sh uh, show none if you have entered nothing as of now. All right, so I'll just click on enter because I don't want to change it right now. And AWS secret access key, you'll put, put the secret access right here. For the region name, just put the region name in which you're working. And for the default output format, you can keep it none as of now. All right, I know AWS has been configured now. So now you can start working with AWS. All right, so now we can we can begin the coding process. So first of all, we have to install the requirements, which are Boto3 and PyDub for uh, converting audio. So first of all, we can install, we have to install Boto3, and we can also install PyDub. All right, so after installing this, we can move on uh, to actually creating the transcribe client, we can do that by importing Boto3 first, and then we can create a client using transcribe equals to Boto3.client transcribe. That will create a client, uh, a transcribe client for us, and now we can access its functions. All right, so now we can begin the transcription process. I will define a function right here. I can name it as defined start transcription job and I will pass S3 URL or I'll just hard code it later the code. And for this function, we can start with first of all naming the transcription job, which I'll just name some random name and that I will keep as transcription job name equals to sample job and some or something like that. You can keep it anything you want. And then we need to refer to the S3 URL we have referred above. And now we can 
get the response using response equals to transcribe dot start transcription job and now we can pass some parameters first of all we can pass the parameter as transcription job name and we can keep it as the job name we have uh, kept above and then we can pass some more parameters like media which is equals to the which is a dictionary which has the media file URI and then we can also select the format we want with the PDF format parameter I'll just keep it as WAV and then I can also choose the language in which the video is currently made this this is a parameter called language code and I'm just I'll just keep it as US English All right, so I've declared all the parameters and now we can uh, return this response. We can actually, uh, basically this process takes a little bit of time so we can uh, actually return the job name instead of response because response is gonna take some time for uh, actually full, uh, getting completed. So we can move on to the next part, which is define, wait, for transcription job and then we can pass the transcription jobs name as the parameter and now we can run a true loop which will run forever and then we can again get the response which is equals to transcribe dot get transcription job and then i'm going to pass the, and then i'm going to pass the transcription job name parameter as the parameter we have in the function which is the transcription job name all right, so now we will forever check the status of the response. Whenever the status is completed, we can then process further. So first of all, we can ensure that the status is present in uh, completed or failed. And before that, we can declare the status equals to response. And then we can get the transcription job and then the transcription job status key this will give us the status of the current job running all right so now if status is in completed or failed then uh we can actually just write the status what's the status of the job for here i'll just write status and then i can further uh apply some conditions like if status equals to completed then we can actually print that the transcription is completed and then we can uh, just return the function because the transcription is completed so for the response we can actually return response and then the transcription job key And we need to return the transcription file URI. This is basically the file which has the transcription written inside in, in a JSON, JSON format. So this is the file we need to download eventually. All right, so this is present in the transcription file URI of the dictionary. And we can just keep a simple else condition, something like uh, print the job failed. All right, so we have developed the both of the functions for completing the job and now we can actually run the functions like first of all we can actually get the job name using the start transcription job function and then i can get the transcript url using the second function which is the wait for transcription job then i'm going to pass the job name as the parameter and this should eventually Give us the transcription URL. I'll just print it so we can finally access it on the browser. All right, so now I'll run this script and hopefully it should give us uh, the transcription of the audio. All right, so now the job has been completed. I and I get a URL here in my terminal, so I can head up this URL. And it will prompt me to download a JSON file, which I can download in my current directory. 
I'll just download it here. And now we can view this file. And as you can see, this is a dictionary. This is basically a JSON object which has all the information about the transcription. And for the transcript key, this has the transcription of the original audio. And it also has some more parameters like start time, end time, and items. So this is the transcription. And that's how basically Transcribe API works with AWS. All right, so now let's move on to the AWS poly part where we will do the text to speech processing. And now we can do that with the AWS poly API. So let's begin the process. So the configuration process remains the same. And now instead of uh, transcribe, we can create a poly client. So how do we create that is by importing border three. And now we can create a client named poly. This can be the go23.client poly. All right, so now I will uh, take some sample text, which can be just something like, hello, my name is Polly. I am a text to speech service. And now we can move on to the uh, calling the function part. So how do we call the poly functions by uh, storing it in the response? And then I can call the poly.synthesize speech function. And I'm gonna put some parameters inside this. First, the first format is the text, obviously, which is the text we have selected above. And then we have the output format. I will just keep it as MP3. And now we also have one more parameter, which is called voice ID. So basically the voice uh, voice agent you're gonna choose to basically have your speech into. All right, so I'll just uh, choose one default voice agent here. And this is my configuration for Poly API. All right, so now I can store the response in output.mp3 with the open with open function i will write the response audio stream inside the output.mp3 file so this should uh, give me the output so let's see if we get the output or not all right so you can see we have stored the uh, audio file here and if i run this this is exactly the transcription uh, for which we have created the speech right here. So that's how Poly API works. So guys, that was all for the video and thanks for watching.